Hello and welcome, friends. TJ and I are here together. Hi, everyone. Uh, and actually together in person, which is kind of rare. Yeah, pretty rare, actually. <laughs> this is at the kind of tail end of being together for now over a week, but starting with coming together with friends and others from the Communion Shalom crew uh, at the Revoice conference. And that is what we want to just give some highlights and sharing about our time at mm -hmm. Revoice. Um, yeah. And might be interesting for people who went to Revoice, uh, but maybe it will be interesting for those who've never been and want to think about whether they should go in the future or maybe send a friend mm -hmm. in the future. Mm -hmm. um, anyways, so we just want to share a few of our thoughts here on a quick little bonus episode. So first we should probably talk about what is Revoice, just in case. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you can listen to some of the backstory. We interviewed Nate Collins, if you want to he use the founder of Revoice. But it is a Christian conference that's been going for six or seven years now mm -hmm. that is specifically designed to seek the flourishing of LGBTQ and SSA Christians in the historic Christian tradition. And specifically the historic Christian traditional sexual ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I have yet to see anybody critique their statement of ethics or faith mm -hmm. so check out they're, they're really well written um, they put a lot of energy into those um so if you hear slander about revoice check it against what they've actually gone on record to say they support i think it's i think it should be mentioned um it is wider than the conference it's like a parachurch organization the conference is probably their main thing and they also mm -hmm. do they have other resources mostly from conferences they have um chapters of the group there's sort of a kind of a unifying organization for the side b movement in mostly in the u.s but there's a lot of other people who attend from outside the u.s because i think it's one of the large organizations that talk about sort of the side b faith and sexuality conversation in the world um yeah and uh so the conference right this year they had we had around close to 600 people at the conference and then they said they had a, around 125 people on the online conference they usually have both modes or both modalities you can tend online. You can tend in person. I would recommend in person. Yeah. Um, <laughs> definitely, if possible. Um, yeah. So I, I know they put a lot of effort into making the online experience. Yeah. Like they had separate kind of interviews. Yeah. Uh, and Q and A's and stuff available for those who are online. And maybe I don't know if they did like breakout rooms and stuff. Anyways, we won't give comments on the online experience. But I do know they put a lot of effort. Yeah. Because some people just can't make it out to the conference. Yeah, yeah. That's um, especially right. those who are around the globe. Mm-hmm. And um, this year was in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Which was my first time going there. I think your first time as well. Have you been to Columbus before? <laughs> I have been to Columbus for a Mennonite youth convention in high school. Oh, okay. So it back. was kind yeah. of fun that the second time I come back is for another Christian conference. Yeah. Um, just by a, a different organization. Last time I was a youth. This time, actually, TJ and I were workshop presenters, which was mm -hmm. part of our highlights um, from the time. Yeah. Um, really quick on Revoice. Some of the, so they have, TJ mentioned, I think, local chapters. Yep. And TJ also participated in uh, their REACH cohort. Yes, I did. REACH cohort is basically their leadership development fellows program. And they're usually people who are interested in engaging the faith and sexuality ministry or conversation in their, some capacity in their churches or their communities or their organizations. And yeah, it's, it's I know, a good experience. I know applications are opening up again soon. How long is the actual program itself? I believe it's nine months. Okay. So it was approximately from um, August to July. Meeting every other week? Meeting monthly? Yeah, we meet it bi-weekly um, every other week. Oh. So yeah, it was, it was a good experience. Um, yeah, it's, it's nice too because it was a way to have at least some connections at Revoice. I, we had a lot of other connections because of our experience of revoice and other communities we've been parts of a part of and i think that's what made this revoice really uh sp kind of special mm -hmm. for me so i've actually been to every revoice conference wow. um and i got to meet some <laughs> other people who had as well uh mm -hmm. and it was fun and and i think this one was my favorite mm -hmm. and i think one of the reasons is that as the side b world has been growing and getting more connected mm -hmm. that Revoice then even more just became the kind of uh, point of connection. So as there's more Revoice chapters 
all the chapter leaders, you know, went out for a dinner yeah. together. Mm -hmm. um, TJ's Reach cohort also like came together for a dinner. And so it just became this cool time where like people you've mainly seen online or maybe, you know, haven't seen in a while would get to come together all in one place. Yeah. Revoice just does such a great job at hospitality that they picked the venue really well. Mm -hmm. uh, it was this beautiful vineyard church uh, out in Columbus, Ohio. Um, who had a great bookstore, by the way, and Revoice's mm -hmm. own bookstore was nice. Mm -hmm. And they, what was I saying? Oh, the hospitality. Just they really make sure that the they've they've nailed it down after doing this for you know over five years of just like okay, they want there to be you know rich content, rich time mm -hmm. to come together, really good time in worship, but then also just good long breaks where you're getting the time to slow down, get in conversation with people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I often think of Revoice as no family reunion sort of experience for me, because you said they've been together for a while. If you've been around the side being movement to the community, you you know people probably over after years. And but yeah, I totally agree. They na they've nailed their formula essentially. Like their model of how they do the conference is very tight. It's very good. They they it seems like everything's thought out. And of course, we saw some of the the growing pains you might say over the years. But I think they're pretty close to where they need to be in terms yeah. of their model. Of how to do the conference, that is. Yeah. yeah. Um, and whereas, uh, as this year was kind of coming about, I was like, oh, should I go to Revoice this year? I don't know. You know, there's a lot of other things going on in life. Mm -hmm. This year, I left the conference and was like, I'm going to be at the next year's <laughs> conference. This was so good. I never want to miss one. Yeah, I he, was so, he was so ready. He was like... Yeah. When do we leave? <laughs> I may already be looking at Airbnb locations ideal for next time. I know. He, like the, the day after, he's like, where, where can we stay next year? And now he's looking for the Airbnb. Uh, because, and next year, yeah, it's going to be in Seattle. You can look on their website. Uh, uh, it'll be exciting. Yeah. Um, okay, so what are, what are some specific highlights for you, TJ, from the conference? Mm -hmm. um, I would say one thing was meeting people from one thing was meeting people from new locations that I hadn't really met before. We actually made some good connections from the Boston area that we hadn't previously. Um, we have a we have a pretty tight relationship with Atlanta people from our friendship with a particular person. Uh, um, anyways, a particular friend of ours. Uh, but it was fun to connect, make connections with the Boston that sort of area. I would also say another highlight was I'm a big fan of David Bennett's work, so I appreciated seeing him on stage. I'm also a major fan of a former podcast guest on Communion and Shalom, Misty Irons. I really appreciated her appreciated her um, stage. She was also a main stage speaker, uh, a general session speaker. I would also say um, I think this time... They said that I think they nailed the model that they kind of need, basically. But I think that we had um, we had enough space in the church. Last year, the space was a little bit tighter, which I liked, too, for other reasons. Like, you, you meet more people, basically. But uh, we had more space that I think was more helpful for, uh, what, do you, what do you say? Helpful for meeting just people in particular affinity groups. And they have groups for people of all sorts, like the groups of people who... Um, are in mixed orientation marriage, people who are use prefer the term SSA, people who are BIPOC, people who are interested in community living of various sorts. There's a Catholic gathering. There's lots of different groups. And I sometimes they're part of my they're my favorite part of it sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like there's some good meetings and I appreciated my two groups this year. Usually you meet twice over lunch during the the few days that the conference is gathered. Yeah, at our affinity group for intentional Christian communities, the guys who are leading it uh, they thought, oh, maybe there'll just be a few others who might come, you yeah. know, and join this group. And there was, I don't know, 30 or something. <laughs> so they were encouraged by just how many people were either already participating in some uh -huh. form of community uh, or were very interested in, yeah. in seeing it happen. I also went to that, but I went to the other half of that. The other half of that was related to um, so, some of the partnerships. Yeah. Getting back to Misty Ironstock. So that mm -hmm. Friday, we started out with Wes, who was leading worship. And the group. Uh, this is great, by the way. Yes. Yeah, definitely a highlight. a highlight. Yeah. Uh, I can't even put words. Yeah, he's excellent. I hope, I'd hope i love if he would be a, or the worship leader, I, I guess is the title, worship leader for the next or future revoices. Uh, so Wes and the, the worship team, they kind of brought 
just made it a little more intimate, came down to the front of the stage, most of them just kind of sitting on the ground uh, there and invited others to come and just join them, get, you know, sit in the aisles, sit up front. Mm-hmm. It was just a very, a very intimate worship time where it was good to just even more so um, gathering closer together, feel that like we are together as one community worshiping before our Lord and it is Christ who brings us together here. Um, and I know I value just being able to get on my knees and embody, um, my, my love before the Lord. Mm. Um, and then, and so we had this kind of tender worship experience right before Misty Irons came and spoke Mm. and she just, I think made every eye, you know, (laughs) tear up up or cry or weep. Um, I was crying during her talk and then afterwards it just hit me even harder like during lunch and i couldn't i was uh the weeping um came back even heavier Mm. and misty irons as an ally of the community uh she was shared about three stories um of same-sex attracted or gay men who she had learned a lot from who were her friends yeah her her friends who had helped transform who she was in her faith Mm -hmm. um and they're just yeah such beautiful stories with some tragedy at times Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and yeah and and i can encourage you guys to all go watch it because at the end of revoice i was so happy to hear that some donors had stepped into support so that revoice could just make all their previous conference videos and current conference videos free for Mm -hmm, access mm -hmm. so I, i think we can probably include that link yeah you can go and watch these sessions uh I'd yeah. say Misty Irons is typically a highlight when she's speaking. Yeah, I think this is her years. third time. Yeah, yeah. So just if you need some guidance, start with Misty <laughs> if Irons. If you don't know who to start with, yeah. just go watch all the Misty Irons <laughs> yeah. videos. And then you'll, you'll find some great ones after. But Misty Irons is definitely a place to start if you are not unsure where to begin. Yeah. So, I would also say I, I did appreciate, I thought our, um, present, our, con, our conference presentation, we talked about kinship, rediscovering kinship beyond marriage. And I thought that it went well. I was happy to see we had many people who attended our breakout session more than I anticipated, actually, originally. I was like, there's a yeah, lot of I people think, in so this room. So TJ and I each presented at Revoiced last year at separate workshops. Mm-hmm. And and so we had to both cut down our presentation and change a little bit because we basically merged our works. So mine was focused on building households of belonging. Mm-hmm. TJ's was focused on covenant siblinghood and such. Mm-hmm. And kind of like, okay, well, what's what brings these together? And so our workshop focused on, oh, well, both of these are ways of expanding kin- mm-hmm. kinship horizons mm-hmm. beyond just marriage. Yeah. What are the ways that we find belonging with other people? Yeah, and then covenant was also a prominent theme in both, talking about uh, particularly kinship that's covenanted, that's not marriage. Mm-hmm. So of course, marriage is one example, but there's other examples in mm-hmm. the world as well. Uh, I, l- I love the opportunity to, to have a workshop there, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and it just shows how many people are really looking for both, yeah, very practical ways to mm-hmm. integrate their lives deeper into relationship within the church, find mm-hmm. belonging, enriching our lives and serving the church, mm-hmm. um, and well, and rooting ourselves in, yeah, just who God is and how he shows himself in the scriptures. Yeah. Um, Something else, I thought, Um, I think we should mention, I thought the venue was fine, good, and I think that does help the conference overall as it gets bigger. Um. Yeah, so I wouldn't. Not, it's not just the ecclesiastical space that I usually find okay. myself in. I'll say that it, it's like a it's a nice big mega church, so it it has lots of space and services in yeah. that way. Yeah. Um, but I'm excited that next year is going to be a, a historic church with mm-hmm. you know some stained glass windows, and mm-hmm, they'll mm-hmm. probably have fun with an organ. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's something really special. Like the first revoice is, in some ways, you know like can never be repeated because it was you know yeah. first of its kind yeah um but one thing that was really special about that was that it was in this historic church that just shows the kind of like the side b has roots in the historic christian tradition that we are following the way of jesus as it has been followed over centuries and centuries mm-hmm. um and that for those who have not felt welcomed in the church uh at, you know and, and a lot of people have suffered a lot it just all the more says look, in this, you know, in the church, you are welcome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And I think it just, 
it just says that a little more stark and clear when you're in traditional church architecture mm -hmm. um, versus what could feel like a conference center. Yeah, I am. Um, like the mega church style of church. Yeah. Yeah. Mega church architecture. When, however, I also noticed a few things this year that I hope are kind of areas of opportunity for the Revoice Conference organizing in the future. For example, I wish we had more like Catholic and Orthodox speakers that are main staged and also maybe more. I get more of this, more of their hymnody, more of their music, like more of the traditional church music, because that came that was came out less prominently this year compared to other years, and even just generally, it's been less prominent. I would say in my experience of Revoice, yeah, it's a tough tension. Um, there's a lot of Presbyterians uh, connected at Revoice. Um, Surprisingly, in some ways, in yeah. some ways, Presbyterians are. Should maybe should feel a little bit more of the middle ground within mm -hmm. the larger global church. Mm -hmm. um, traditional hymns were present. Uh, yeah. Um, but how, yeah, I guess free church Protestantism felt like the predominant. Very presence. dominant. Very dominant. That's what I felt. Yeah. Um, and of course, many strengths from that like broad movement, but it doesn't mean all the strengths are there necessarily. Also, and I think the. Your voice is ecumenical, if you weren't aware. So it does, if there's Christians from all all over the spectrum of possible Christian expressions, you know? And yeah, I just wish it had more of that. It, also, it, moves, me, it moves me closer to worship than some other songs at times, or other music, or other ways of engaging the faith. And I just wish it was more represented, just because they do represent a, a variety. Especially a lot of our Catholic friends were there, and next year there might be even more. So, yeah. I was happy. This is kind of unusual for me in my experience, but I was fun. it was fun. I connected with some other Anglicans there, mostly like straight ally types, but it was still fun to meet them. So, yeah, people are there. It's my point. Like, the high church is there too, as well as even if there's a lot of free church type Protestants, they're also there. But also the high churches are there, the apostolic traditions, as they call themselves. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, so I'll be interested to see what that looks like to mm -hmm. try to integrate, um, which I know will make some people uncomfortable, but that's kind of... Eh, I think Revoice does a good job of welcoming people into discomfort. Yeah. Even Wes, I think, called that out sometimes. Of yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I know this might make some of you uncomfortable, and if you know you need to sit down, that's fine, but if you're able to like step into this discomfort yeah. and yeah, yeah, meet yeah. the Lord there. Um, right. So Wes was really good at navigating those things. Mm -hmm. Another highlight that we haven't talked about is we were this year. We were very intentionally hosting others at our um, Airbnb, and I think that's a good practice if you can do it. You know, yeah. yeah. I would uh, for those who God has given the skills of of hosting an invitation. Mm -hmm. um, find you know, find your Airbnb with a few people and just meet people, especially those who maybe it's their first time at Revoice, mm -hmm. and and invite them over. Grab a few snacks. Grab a few beverages. Um, that we really prioritize it that this year, mm -hmm. and we plan to continue to do so in the next yeah, year. I appreciate it a lot, and I look forward to our next next year's thing. It also one thing that's fun to me is to see all the kind of the subgroups of side B because they're they're mostly present there. They're all kind of present at their conference, and of course, geographical distinctions is part of that. But there's more to say as well. But so. yeah, I don't know what you uh, fully mean by side groups. So one thing that's worth uh, mentioning uh, in kind of Revoice being this kind of fairly, you know, like central gathering place of a lot of different side B folks is that side B, you know, we have an episode on what's it called? Unity and differences yeah. in side B. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it's real one great to just come forward together and say, yes, you know, we love Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, we worship him mm -hmm. and we are together encouraging each other and following the scriptures, following his word. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and yeah, and caring for each other, praying for each other. And it's time to, even those who we have some different uh, sensibilities on different matters, to build those face-to-face -face relationships. You mm -hmm. know, it's just too easy for people to become like digitized. You know, even, I just love like a little bit of people watching and you see like, oh, this person who I think is like really cool and really respect their thoughts. And then, you know, sometimes you like see someone in, it's just like, oh, yeah, we all have our little quirks and things, and yeah. it just humanizes, you know? Like, it oh, does, yeah, we're does. all, like, somewhat awkward human beings. Yeah, so that embodied community of not just, yeah, quirky queer people, but um, <laughs> what was I saying? Oh, that 
yeah, it 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 is a large umbrella, and so mm-hmm. if you go watch online, you will hear things uh, from the stage spoken that you might disagree with. Um, that could be because they come from a different branch of Christianity, a different mm-hmm. uh, part of the tradition that mm-hmm. doesn't exactly vibe with uh, their tradition. your tradition, yeah. um, or just their own kind of personal way that they're sorting through things. Yeah, um, and so there's a there's a work there to say how it's not merely um, oh, like we agree to disagree, so we don't talk about. It. I think no, like we're we're thoughtfully leaning into these things, giving people the space to to be, to mm-hmm. share their perspective, speak mm-hmm. from their convictions, and and then for us to yeah be in conversation about those convictions yeah. and continue to be sharpening one another and learning from one another. Mm-hmm. Um, so revoice while it is a side B space, it's not an echo chamber. <laughs> and there, it's still a place where you're going to get challenged. Yeah, I think so. Also, part of that is I think sometimes people wonder: are are the are side B at Revoice? Is it only side B people? But there's actually a lot of straight ally or straight people who are thinking about these conversations. There's even there's sometimes side A people come right in order to see what's happening, like learn more if they're interested. Maybe there's other people like side Y, or side X people, but I've never met them. But maybe they come too. But there's definitely straight people and side A people who attend. So. Uh, I think sometimes people are worried. Can I go if I don't? If I'm not precisely yes, if they're um, not sure if they're side B yes, or, or I'm not precisely in agreement on these side B things, so they're kind of wavering or feeling uncomfortable or don't know what they think. It's like yes, people people go, and I think people usually enjoy themselves. If yeah, they if they attend. Yeah, it, yeah. it's it's a thoroughly safe and welcoming place mm-hmm. that I think would be encouraging. Basically to any, I'm just like I can't yeah, imagine I who would not benefit to go. Yeah, agreed. Uh, it it's it's such a rich time. Um, mm. That I our little review of it is failing to put words to. Um, it it was a like a good little foretaste of heaven. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Uh, um, one of my this is probably my last thought to share. Um, you're mentioning that we have a lot of straight friends who come to a conference as well. Mm-hmm. And I met someone who has actually also been at every Revoice since the beginning uh, and is straight. And a few years into Revoice, met a friend there who they've now become like brother friends. He met like a best friend at Revoice. Mm-hmm. So now I'm like, oh, and I know all these straight guys who like don't feel like they have good close friends. And I'm like, yeah. Come to Revoice. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. What's your closing thought? Uh, I'm excited to go back, and I'm excited to keep making connections there when I do. That's my closing thought. <laughs> so. Okay. Bye, friends. Bye.